In this unit, we're going to learn about two tools that we can use to investigate differential equations. So if you remember, a differential equation is simply an equation that involves some unknown function and its derivative or perhaps second derivative or other derivatives. And the solution to a differential equation is a function, specifically that unknown function that is involved in the equation. But the question is, what if we can't solve directly to find this function? Now at this point we've learned one method for solving relatively simple differential equations where we can integrate to find the solution. And we will learn a few other methods for solving differential equations. But there are plenty of differential equations that we can't solve directly. Or at least we can't solve analytically using the tools we'll learn in this class or even in a full semester of differential equations. It turns out there are differential equations that don't fit any of the forms that our methods apply to. But we're not entirely stuck if we can't directly find this function. If we can't find a solution in a nice closed form, y equals the answer, there are still some options available to us. Specifically, we can still draw a graph that will represent the solution and this is where we'll draw what's called a slope field and we'll talk about that in a moment and we can also come up with approximate solutions so we can approximate the solution numerically using an approach called Euler's method and we'll talk about that as well later on and both of these methods are designed for first-order equations. Most of everything that we'll do in this course with differential equations will involve first-order equations. We'll see second-order equations briefly and if you go on to take a full semester of differential equations you might see more. But first-order equations are probably the most common at least of the ones that you'll see. So both of these methods will apply to a pretty broad range of equations, any first order equation you can do one of these methods with. So we'll start with slope fields and then we'll see how we can use that concept to understand a little bit about Euler's method as well. So for slope fields let's take an example and illustrate how we can draw a shape of the solution even if we can't find its closed form, its equation, we can still visualize it. Here's an example where we have a differential equation y prime equals t plus y. It's a relatively simple first order differential equation and we're going to draw what's called the slope field or direction field for this equation. Now look carefully at what we have here. With this differential equation we know something about y even though we can't find y directly right now we know something about the slope of y, something about the direction of y, and that's its derivative, right? The derivative simply refers to the slope. So if we knew a value of t and y, we could find t plus y, and that would equal the slope for that point at t and y that are given. Let me show you what I mean. On this graph, the horizontal axis is the t-axis, that's our independent variable, and the vertical axis is y. If we pick a point, let's say we start with the origin, 0, 0. So we say when t and y are 0 and 0, we can find the derivative at that point. Now, at the origin, we're talking about this point right here and we can find the slope at that point by simply plugging in t and y to this differential equation and finding y prime at that point. So very simply if we plug in 0 for each of these we have 0 plus 0 equals 0 so y prime equals 0 at that point. Now what does that mean? What that means is if the solution happens to pass through the point 0, 0 which we don't know whether it will or not we don't have an initial condition that would tell us whether it does or not, but if it did, 
it would have a slope of zero at that point, meaning the shape of the curve at that point would be along a horizontal line like that. I don't know how well you can see that small segment of a horizontal line at the origin, but we don't know much beyond that, but we know at that point the slope would be zero. So there would be a little horizontal segment there. That's the section at that point of this curve. Let's take another point. Let's take the point when t and y are both one. So we're looking at this point right here. When t and y are both one, if we plug in one for t and one for y, we get two for y prime, just based on our differential equation. That means at that point, the slope would be two, so it would look like this more or less. And it's not perfect, but at least we get the sense that it would have a positive, relatively steep slope. At one zero, for instance, the slope would be one, which would be a diagonal positive line. And we can continue this for all the points on the grid. Now think about what we're doing. What we're doing is we're saying, if it were to pass through this point, we don't know where the solution is exactly, but if it passed through this point, we know which direction it would be headed. And if we fill out the rest of this grid, we can get a sense of the shape of the curve. So I'm going to fill out approximately the shape of this solution by checking each point on the grid that's shown and drawing the appropriate small line segment at that point. So for instance, at two zero, the slope would be two. At three zero, the slope would be three. And you can see how it's getting steeper as we move to the right. We can continue this process. For instance, at two one, the slope would also be three. So that would again be relatively steep and so on. Now I'm going to fill out the rest of these points somewhat approximately because all we want is a rough idea of what this looks like. Now that we've drawn the grid points for everything that's shown here, and again this picture is relatively rough, but it gives us a sense of the shape of various solutions. So once we have a picture like this drawn, we can pick a starting point and visualize what this curve would do. So for instance, if we were given an initial condition of 0, 0 0.5, so something right here, if we were told that's the initial condition, we can use these direction markers as kind of a wind map. Visualize wind moving in these directions and then picture what would happen if we dropped a leaf at the initial point and see which way the wind would carry it. You can see how in that region the direction is pointing up and to the right, so it would do something like this. And that's not perfect, but it gives you kind of a sense of what would happen if you dropped something at that point, if that's your initial condition. If the initial condition, for instance, was down here at, say, 0, negative 3 quarters, roughly, it might do something more like this. And if it was down at zero, negative one and a half, it might do something more like this. And all we're trying to do is get a rough sense of what solutions would do at different initial conditions. And we could even trace these backward like this if we wanted to. And we can kind of visualize what this family of curves would do the general solution to this. Even though we don't know what that equation is, even though we can't write down the closed form of the solution, we can visualize and we can get a good sense of what this is doing. We can even tell how different initial conditions would lead to different behavior. So initial conditions like 0, 0 0.5 or 0, negative 0.75 would tend to have increasing behavior as we move to the right as time moves forward in that sense. And things underneath negative one would tend to decrease and sort of the end behavior 
would trend off toward negative infinity, for instance. So there's a lot we can learn from one of these graphs if we can draw it. Now, drawing them by hand is really tedious, but you should have a sense of how it works. That all we're doing is at each point on the grid, we're plugging in those coordinates to the differential equation. And once we do that, we find the slope at each of those points. And then we just draw a small line segment with approximately that slope at that point. So each point matches the slope that comes from our differential equation at that point. Now next we're going to look at some examples of slope fields and see what we can observe from them and see if we can figure out how to match a slope field to an equation and see what characteristics we can pick out from them.